Right. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this C Nano Distinguished Lecture. So my name is Yi Xiang Gan. I'm the Deputy Director of Member Engagement at the C Nano. So on behalf of C Nano, I would like to welcome you to our <coughs> Distinguished Series. It is our great pleasure today to have Professor Zhuan Kai Wang from CTU Hong Kong for this lecture. So before we begin our formal proceedings, I would like to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners of the land on which we meet. The Gadigal people of Iran nation, it is upon their ancestral land that the University of Sydney is built. As we share our knowledge, teaching, learning, and research practices within the university, may we also pay respect to the knowledge embedded forever within the Aboriginal custodianship of country. So in this Sydney Distinguished Lecture, I will pass to Antonio for introducing our speaker, uh, Professor Zhuang Tan Wang, and moderate the lecture. Professor a Antonio Tricoli is a professor at the School of Biomedical Engineering and chairing our Sydney Nano Grand Challenge on Nano Sensing Airborne Pathogens for Public Biosecurity. Please note this lecture will be recorded and will be uploaded to our Sydney Nano YouTube channel for the wider community. So, Antonio, please. Thank you, Xi Yang, and thank you all for attending. And as mentioned, um, I lead the Nanotechnology Research uh, Laboratory at the Faculty of Engineering, and I'm a proud member of the Sydney Nano Institute. I'm very happy to have here with us my good colleague and uh, outstanding scientist, Son Kang Ram. Son Kang is a chair professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at CTU, and um, in his career, he has really achieved outstanding awards and uh, many, many other things. Among the things I would like to mention, not all, else I will take all the time, is that he has done an excellent education with actually the master at the Shanghai Institute in the China Academy of Science, a PhD degree from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, and uh, a training as a postdoc at Columbia University. Since 2009, he has been at City University in Hong Kong, and there actually has been um, achieving many awards and many significant contribution to science which have been recognized by the 2021 Green Tech Award, 2020 Explorer Prize, the top 10 innovation and technology news in Hong Kong. And this is not only academic awards. One of the others I would like to mention with the big impact on society and technologies is invention on photoelectricity generation with ultra high power, uh, which won the gold medal with congratulations of the jury in the international exhibition of Geneva. Uh, the topic of today is the water nexus and how we can learn from nature uh, on how nature works and interface with water. Water is important. You can imagine pathogens spread through the air like COVID hosted in water droplet. You can imagine the importance of water to produce uh, renewable fuels, such hydrogen and many other things. And so with this, I'm really actually looking forward to hear from Sankai about his lecture today and what he will tell us about the water nexus. Thank you. I, I will appreciate if you could keep your mics muted for the next 45 minutes. And then we will have the Q&A, we'll, uh, I will coordinate. So please raise your hand or send me messages. Thank you. Okay, uh, can you hear me? You, you can, right? Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Antonio. It's my great pleasure to have the opportunity to share with you my work uh, done over the past 10 years. And also, as just mentioned by Antonio, we met in UF. Uh, I really miss the time. Hopefully I can see you uh, in person, okay. So now let me share the, the screen, okay. Uh, uh, my work actually was very uh, simple. Uh, there are two key words here. One is nature inspired, another is surface. The function is for water energy nexus, okay. So currently, you know, our earth is heated by the COVID-19, right. So in this special time, uh, we have to think, you know, how to learn from nature, you know, because nature is adaptive, nature is intelligent, is cooperative and diverse and interconnected. And also nature is free, you know, nature didn't apply patent, so we can learn from nature, we can get inspiration from nature every day, everywhere. And in our lab, you know, we focus on surface, okay? Uh, actually, the progress of humankind uh, is driven by learning from nature. You know, things from many, several thousand ago, you know, to now, you know, every part of our society uh, is driven by learning from nature. 
you know, for example, uh, uh, for here I show this photo, the Sydney Opera House, right? This art is really inspired by the shell, the, the shape, okay? In our lab, we focus on three different surfaces. The first one is lotus leaf, right? Uh, basically, lotus leaf can keep self-cleaning uh, because of the combination of the chemical and uh, physical property. And another one is getting uh, IP, and another one piece of plant, okay? So we use this kind of surface, you know, to achieve different functions, okay? So today, especially I will talk about in our lab, you know, our effort to design the surface to control, you know, how the liquid interact with the surface. And then we move to application, right? The application ranging from how to harvest water from air, you know, how to use the water to generate power, you know, how to use the water to cool down our earth, okay? So this is our effort. So uh, briefly, I want to answer some question scientifically, you know, for the hydrophobic surface, right? The, the surface repel water. There is a parameter. That parameter is the contact time. What's the shortest contact time, you know, for water to contact the surface, right? For hydrophilic surface, the water will spread, right? So how to control the spreading velocity? How to control the spreading direction, right? And also for super wetting. The super wetting is top 10 technology uh, last year, but currently super wetting only occur in a very narrow temperature range. Once beyond 100 degree, you know, there's no super wetting. You know, today uh, we, we made some breakthrough in this area. I will briefly discuss later. Technologically, you know, how to develop scalable and durable surface, you know, how to use the water to generate power, you know, how to use the water to cool down the surface. And also, we also explore some new application. So let's look at the history. You know, 200 years ago, the Thomas Young laid down the foundation of the weighting, right? The weighting, uh, basically we use the contact angle, right? The contact angle uh, quantify, you know, how, the surface like water or not, right? And then we have a Kaiser with the equation, and then we have a lotus effect, a piece of plant effect. But more importantly, is the dynamic property, you know, how water interact with the surface dynamically, right? So as shown here, you know, the water will leave the surface. But the key part, the key parameter is the, the contact time. In our lab, we fabricate a very nicely surface which can break the fundamental current time limitation. So we reduce the current time by 80%. You know, for example, your bird right, can run 100 meter, uh, use 9.58 seconds, but we can run 100 meter only two seconds. So we can reduce the record by 80%, okay? And uh, after that, you know, we continue to develop a new technology actually in this area over the past 80 years, uh, there are more than 40 papers published in Nature and Science. If you look at this kind of publication, there's no 2D material, no morph, no graphing, right? So basically it's just a story about how water inter interacts with very simple the surface. Okay, and then we continue to design you know, the, the, the surface, okay? How to make the surface robust, you know, how to make the surface uh, more durable, okay? And also we study, you know, how to uh, reduce the count time based on the moving surface, because you know, for, for example, for airplane, right? So it involves some erratic motion, okay? And also uh, I answered the first question. For the second question is, you know, how to control the water flow on the hydrophilic surface, because on the hydrophilic surface, the water will uh, flow driven by capillary, right? But there's some limitation. It's very hard to achieve spontaneous and also the high speed and also the long distance, right? We can't run 100 meter, uh, uh, we, we can't run you know, 10,000 meter with the speed of 100 meter, right? So here, our technique is we just control the surface. Uh, okay. Oh. 
Okay, so our technology is we just control the surface uh, topography. Okay, so we use the concept of uh, liquid diode, right? Uh, oh, sorry, we use the concept of electronic diode. Electronic diode is based on silicon, and also we have to apply a voltage. But on our surface, you know, we can control the liquid flow in just in one way and spontaneous, and also at a high speed, and also adaptive to any material, you know, ranging from hydrophilic, hydrophobic, super hydrophilic, and super hydrophobic, and also adapt to a, a, a wide range of temperature, for example, at low temperature and high temperature. Okay, so I'm very fortunate uh, to collaborate with uh, um, Antonio in 2016, we published paper to mimic uh, Mimasa, okay? So because of this kind of uh, uh, self-assembly, you know, the water can flow spontaneously. And after that, we design different surface to make water to flow, you know, uh, no matter on hydrophilic surface, Hydro hydrophobic surface, even small droplet, you know, we can control the flow, right? So because of time limit limitation, so I will not uh, go to the detail, but I will, uh, maybe I can uh, uh, share uh, some, uh, some of my work uh, in this research uh, uh, line. Okay, so let me be, I share you uh, our, uh, uh, another work here. Okay, so maybe this this work because this work is uh, uh, it mimic a tree uh, a tree leaf. Here we have the needle. If you look at the needle, it's very interesting because one side is flat, another side is uh, uh, conic. So my student just uh, uh, get the, the, the leaf, and then he fabricate artificial structure. And more interestingly, when the two droplets we put two droplets on the surface, there's some, some magic happens. The first magic is, if you look at the video here, the large droplet fly toward the small droplet. This is unusual. You know, usually when two droplets merge together, the small droplet will flow toward the large droplet. And the second surprise is, this side is flat, this side is conic. You know, our feet could tell us the liquid will flow from the conic side to the flat, flat side. But on our needle, there are two surprises here. Okay, so why we have this kind of surprise? You know, we call the cheap induced flipping because the droplet become flipping. The beauty of flipping is after the droplet flipping on one needle, and then the droplet will fly in the air. Because the droplets fly in the air, there's no friction. So the flying distance is longer and the flying velocity is longer. So we are not, we are not happy. So we continue to fabric a large scale surface, you know, right? So here, you know, we can make the, uh, the directional liquid transport, okay? So uh, I think there's lots of application, especially for uh, water energy harvesting, okay? So uh, I talk about uh, how to control the uh, liquid flow on the hydrophilic surface, even on super hydrophobic surface, we also can control the liquid flow. Uh, usually this is very, very difficult because on super hydrophobic surface, the liquid is very mobile. It, there's no way to control the liquid flow. But uh, we developed develop a new technology that is based on surface charge, okay? So by, impact the surface at different uh, velocity, we generate surface charge gradient. And because the liquid is polar, so the liquid will flow following the surface charge gradient. So that this one so can allow us to make the droplet you know, climb the wall and also even blood, you know, we can also uh, uh, make the blood repair the surface, okay? So even we public paper in Nature Material, but this phenomena is not very, not well controlled. Uh, this year, we, uh, we modify the work, and then we develop a new technology we call electrostatic tweezer. So we can guide the droplet in a well-controlled way, right? So the, the, actually also our needle, 
didn't touch the droplet. Basically, it remotely, uh, remotely control. Okay, so we can use the droplet to clean the surface. We can use the droplet to serve as the chemical reactor, and also we can uh, achieve many other uh, functions. Okay, and then we continue. Okay, so we we use photothermal uh, technique. So we by shining the laser in uh, in far away. Okay, uh, based on the photothermal effect, you know, we can make the droplet to transport, we can make the droplet climb the wall, and we can make the droplet flow in the uh, inside the channel, you know, we, we can also make the droplet flow within the uh, oil. So basically, the every function is well controlled, so we can tailor the droplet transport dynamics by using electrostatic or photothermal effect. Okay, so I discuss, you know, how to control the droplet flow and how to control the droplet flow uh, uh, velocity. But uh, for this kind of work, there's one, one challenge remain. So the challenge is, you know, how to control the liquid flow direction, okay? So usually the physics tell us the, the flow direction is governed by uh, the, the, the gradient, especially the chemical gradient or the, uh, or the roughness gradient or the curvature gradient, all this kind of gradient is governed by surface property. But recently, uh, we, uh, uh, my, one of my postdoc found a very interesting structure from a tree. Okay, so this is the structure. The one side is concave and one, another side is con con uh, convex. And uh, when we put the liquid on the, the leaf, something interesting happened, okay? So the ethanol will flow along the ratchet, but the water will flow against the ratchet direction. So that means on one surface, the different liquid will choose the different uh, spraying direction. So, so based on this kind of inspiration, and then we mimic the structure, and then we we got uh, we uh, we we got we fabricated the artificial surface so the water can flow spontaneously and also the, at very high speeds. Remember, you know, on our surface the structure is quite large. You know, there's no nano structure, even with our even with our nano structure, so the liquid flow very rapidly. So probably you wonder, you know, why. Uh, on our surface, you know, different liquid flow different direction. The secret lie in the reentrant structure. So if you look at the tip here, we have a reentrant. The reentrant modifies the energy barrier for liquid transport. So basically, the water have a large surfactation. Okay, the water tend to get pinned on the reentrant, but the ethanol, you know, because the ethanol uh, uh, surfactation is smaller, the ethanol can penetrate the energy barrier. So this is the reason why the water and ethanol will flow in different direction. Okay, so I discussed, you know, how to control the liquid flow, but more importantly, you know, it's about the application. So one application is for water purification. So we use the photothermal effect and also uh, by controlling the super hydrophobic, per, uh, hydrofo super hydrophobic property, you, we can enhance, you know, the, the water purification uh, performance and also the water flux and the salt rejection rate is very robust, it's very durable, okay? So now I will talk about, you know, how to fabricate, uh, I will talk about another extreme case, okay? Another extreme case about a super wetting. Usually, if the surface is hard, for example, the surface here is ab above 300 uh, uh, temperature. So when we put the droplet on the surface, because the surface is very hard, the droplet will lever uh, leverage. We, the droplet will jump and, and uh, you know, fly because you know, the, the droplet is blocked by the vapor layer, right? When water evaporates, there's a vapor layer. So that's good, that's good for some application, especially for drug reduction, but that is dangerous or dimetrical for heat transfer. You know, let us think uh, the disaster happened in Japan in 2011. 
at a high temperature, you know, we couldn't cool down the nuclear power plant with the, the seawater. So that phenomena is called the Latin frost. This phenomena has a history of more than 266 uh, years. Over the past 200 years, you know, scientists try to develop a new technology to suppress this phenomena. You know, even this phenomena is artful, right? It's, it is also playful, for, playful for some uh, uh, interesting uh, magic thing in, in our daily life, but it's dangerous for heat transfer, right? Uh, it's very useful for drug reduction, for mixing, but it's that detrimental for heat transfer. Right. As I mentioned, you know, for example, in nuclear power plant happened in Japan at a high temperature, the formation of vapor layer block the heat transfer. So this is the reason why we have the minimum heat flux. Okay. So now the key is how to suppress this flooding frost point. If we can, you know, if we can suppress this phenomena, for example, if the flooding frost point can be more than 2000 degrees, we will completely prevent this phenomenon, right? But how to do that? So there's many challenge. But if you look at the fundamental, the fundamental is how to mediate the water and the vapor flow. It's very easy to control the water flow as I mentioned, you know, uh, over the past 10 minutes, but it's very difficult to control the vapor flow. Why? Because at a high temperature, Right, the water evaporate, and then we have vapor, we have vapor, right? The vapor will generate large pressure. So this kind of large pressure will push the water up, right? So, so over the past two centuries, you know, people try to use the surface engineering, you know, to decouple the water and the vapor flow. So, so recently, uh, uh, actually uh, five years ago, we have an idea if we couldn't completely uh, suppress the Latin frost. How about we shift the water from Latin frost region to the boiling region? Because in the boiling region, the water will boil, right? And then we have very efficient heat transfer. So we develop a, a new surface consisting of the pillar arrays. Okay, so different pillar density, we will have different Latin frost points. So at high temperature, even we have a Latin frost, but the beauty is once the droplet go to the frost region, the droplet will move to the boiling region. But still, you know, we couldn't fundamentally suppress this phenomenon. So this year, in the early this year, we published a paper in Nature, you know, we completely solve this problem. So the idea is we try to decouple the water and the vapor flow. Let's think this way. So at high temperature, right, normally the water will jump. But if we have something like a sponge, the water will be absorbed quickly. And after the water is absorbed, we will generate vapor. If we have vapor channel, for example, the vapor channel is downwear. So the vapor will, will uh, flow under the ground. For example, we have, we have the uh, subway, right? In Sydney, we have a subway. We have the train, right? So the people will walk on the ground and the bus or the subway will run under the ground. So this is our initial idea. So we decouple the water and the vapor flow, okay? So only this is not enough. So to solve this problem, we resort to the surface with contrasting thermal property. So the pillar is thermally conductive. So thermally conductive is good for heat transfer, okay? So the here is hard surface, right? So we can have heat transfer between the cold water and hard surface. And the membrane is the insulating. The combination of conducting and insulation really make a difference, okay? So now let's look what happened. So at here, as shown here, the temperature is more than 1000, okay? When we put the drop plate on the hard surface, the water flow and the water spread spontaneously. So this is for the first time, you know, we can achieve the super wetting at extremely high temperature. So because the water evaporates very quickly, so even the initial temperature is more than 1000, we can quickly cool down the surface, you know, down to 100 degrees. So by this kind of design, we 
completely, completely overcome the traditional limitation. So limitation is caused by lightning frost effect. So our design is generic, you know, not only uh, uh, on the steel, if we can fabricate the structure on any kind of material. You know, for example, if the material is hard to be textured, we can just fabricate the structure on the steel on a very thin layer. And then we just attach our armor, we call armor. We can, we can, we can attach our, the membrane or our film or any material, you know, even on the curved surface, okay? So I think uh, the application is uh, very broad, especially in the harsh environment involved with the high temperature. So I think fundamentally, you know, we solve a challenge about uh, super weighting. You know, as I mentioned, super weighting is top 10 emerging technology in chemistry last year. But super weighting only occur at a very natural temperature range. But for the first time, you know, we achieved super weighting at a temperature more than 1000 degrees. I think this uh, phenomena will open up many applications. Okay. So uh, I talked about the three fundamental question, you know, how to control the water flow, but it was how to fabricate the surface, right? So we use uh, uh, spring coating uh, technology, and also we design very beautiful structure. The surface is very robust, and also the surface is durable, and also the keep very uh, keep very good super uh, hydrophobic property. And also recently, uh, we adopt another uh, uh, design. The design is very similar to our skin. You know, our skin is made of a third layer. Our design also have a third layer. So the surface can prevent the ice formation and the surface is, kind of, uh, is anti-corrosive and the surface is very robust, you know, and also even we heat the surface, there's no firing, okay. So we use one design to solve a different challenge. Okay, I'll show here. And uh, also we develop a new technology to scalable manufacturing the surface. Usually it's very hard to fabricate the surface with uh, pre-designed uh, structure. We develop a new technology, you know, we can transfer the pattern, you know, from the mood to any kind of uh, material. And okay, so after I discuss in, uh, the fundamental knowledge and also the manufacturing, I will briefly discuss some application. In the first application is about energy uh, generation. So uh, currently the new uh, re renewable energy is, uh, uh, is very important, especially for water energy. You know, current technology is impossible to harvest the water droplet or moisture. moisture. So, so over the past uh, several years, we start to work on this area, you know, also in this area, you know, there's se you know, several technology emerged, for example, triple electric nanogenerator, or uh, uh, streaming flow, or osmotic power. But in our lab, you know, we uh, use a triple electric effect. Okay, so we study uh, how to harvest the water energy based on different interfaces, for example, solid solid interface, solid liquid interface and liquid liquid interface. Let's start from solid uh, liquid interface. You know, previously, the energy conversion efficient is extremely low. Okay, even the water impact on the surface, but there's no power generation because you know, power is very limited. So why the power is very, why the power is very limited? Because you know, the, the contact, contact electrification, electrification or the friction is, interfacial effect. The charge only occur on the surface. So now the question is how can we dramatically enhance the power generation efficiency? So in our lab, we are inspired by the transistor design. If you look at the transistor, we have three terminals, the gate, the source, and the drain. If we apply voltage in the gate, the current will flow between the source and the drain, right? So based on this kind of inspiration, we modify the previous design. We add another electrode we call the drain, okay? When the water touch the drain, 
some magic happen. Okay, when the water touched the drain, you see the peak here. Okay, so this magic lead to an output which is 3,000 times larger than the previous design. So it's very quite magic. It's just by modifying the design, by introduce the second electrode, we fundamentally make a difference. Okay, so the reason is previously the power generation based on the contact electrification is a surface effect. But in our design, we have the bulk effect or the body effect, okay? So the power generation is not only from the friction. The power generation is from the charge, from the material, okay? So this is the beauty of this work. As highlighted by American Physical Society, so this very simple work is a combination of two fundamental phenomena. The first one is hydrophobic effect. That one has been there almost 4,000 years. Another one is triple electric, triple electric effect. That one had a history more than 2,600 uh, years. Okay, so this is you know, how a simple design can change the landscape of the, uh, the research area. So after uh, that work, you know, we continue to modify our design, right? So we make the surface super hydrophobic. By this way, the water can jump from the surface quickly. And also we combine with the piezoelectric effect. So previously we use the triple electric by use the, by combine the triple electric and the piezoelectric, you know, we can further enhance the energy generation efficiency. And recently, based on one droplet, the movie is real time, okay? Based on one droplet, we can light up a 20 watt light bulb. Uh, it, probably you can't, you can't imagine, you know, this, the, this one is from one single droplet. If we have a continued droplet impact, we will have a continued the, the, the pulse, okay? So today uh, we can reach uh, the power density one ten thousand watt per square meter. You know, uh, we will have a paper come out. You know, the the but here is the peak. Okay, the peak power density is twenty thousand watt per square meter. But today we can reach ten thousand watt per square meter. Okay, so this is the beauty of the droplet. Okay, so not only from the surface. You know, we can have the energy from the uh, the plant leaf also from the, the stone, as long as we have water, you know, we can harvest the energy. Okay, so, and also we can use this technique for the building, right? So for example, we can uh, switch the color of the building, right? So basically just use one single drop, one single droplet. When the droplet impact on the glass, the glass will change the color, okay? So the, uh, sometime, you know, the, 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 uh, the UV light can pass, sometime, you know, the, the optic, uh, uh, the visible light can pass, okay? By this kind of effect, we can save the energy, uh, save the building energy. So if we don't have a continued water flow, we can first stop the water inside the tubing, right? So as long as we have the motion, right? We can gen generate the power. If we don't have water, we can first harvest the water from air because there's lots of water in the air. Okay, and then after we harvest the water, we continue produce power. So our technique, we launch a company, you know, we basically, we want to achieve both functions. First one, we harvest the water from the humid weather, and then we produce power. Okay, so I talk about how to harvest energy from the uh, uh, solid liquid contact. And also we can harvest energy from liquid liquid contact. You know, for example, in the marine, right? So we, the surface repair water, uh, the surface repair the, uh, the drag, reduce the drag, uh, repair the folding, and also we can uh, have energy generation. So not only on the liquid liquid interface, and uh, we can also uh, uh, improve the energy conversion efficient from the solid the solid interface, okay? And also recently, uh, uh, tomorrow we have a new paper published in Science Advances, you know, even a bubble 
you know, we can produce 40 volt voltage, okay? So we can power electronic device, you know, we don't uh, overestimate the, the, the power from one single bubble. Uh, so basically, I think the take home message is our transistor is by design is, is generic. We can have this energy from liquid liquid interface, from solid liquid interface, from solid solid interface, any kind of interface, okay? So uh, we also uh, uh, have you know, work on uh, for another application is about how to cool down the surface. Basically, we use the latent heat of the water. So we work on the condensation, uh, you know, how to achieve a uh, you know, drop water condensation and a film water condensation to cool down the surface. And also we uh, you know, work on the fluid boiling, right? Because the, the chip the, for the computer, the challenge is how to cool down the computer chip, okay? So we use the fluid boiling uh, to cool down the computer chip efficiently. And also uh, we work with the radiative, radiative cooling to emit the heat you know, from the earth to the space, okay? So that one is inspired by the uh, some uh, inset from in the desert, okay? So by design the surface and also make the surface water repellent, uh, okay? So we can make the surface durable and uh, very efficient for really energy-free cooling. And uh, uh, I, I very quickly, I talk about the application. One is power generation, another is the cooling in our lab. You know, we also work on the other uh, topic, for example, adhesive. In, uh, we, for the first time, we achieve reversible on the water adhesive. So this is basically the first time you know, people can uh, achieve a reversible adhesion. Uh, recently, we make another uh, new finding. The new finding is, you know, we just use the, use the capillary effect, okay? So in capillary effect, you know, we can, uh, we can switch the adhesion in the app both in the air and also water. You know, we use this technique to transport uh, objective, object, right? Something like the, 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 uh, the manipul manipulator or the robot. And also we use uh, work on the flexible electronics, you know, bas basically uh, by controlling the adhesion, right? So also by controlling the surface chemistry, we make our adhesive transparent and also have very strong adhesion for uh, something like the skin. And also we turn to the 3D printing by controlling the surface topography, we can significantly enhance the detection sensitivity. So I think this is the beauty of manufacturing and also the uh, surface structure modification. So uh, very quickly, uh, I show you my work uh, in, three, in three areas, uh, for, uh, especially uh, uh, on the first one is how to control the liquid flow. The second one is the how to generate power from liquid flow. The third one is how to cool down the surface by, uh, by, uh, by latent heat. So uh, I also want to uh, mention that uh, recently I launched, uh, launched a new journal, uh, the Droplet. I, uh, I, show, I want to show you the video here.
Okay. Uh, with that, uh, uh, thank you very much for your invitation. And uh, now it's my great pleasure to take any kind of question. Okay. Thank you. Well, I would like uh, on behalf of everyone to thank Zhuang Kai for this amazing uh, lecture. It was very interesting, <laughs> incredible, the things you've been able to do uh, at the liquid water uh, uh, solid interface, harvesting energy, manipulating, cooling things, really inspiring. So um, the presentation is open for question. If you raise your hand, I will go through you one by one and trying to unmute you. Okay, while well, you think perhaps about the question, I have one. So Zonka, you have shown some incredible robust surface because usually we know that it's so hard to obtain nanomicrostructures which can repel water because usually they are porous and at the same time being able to make them robust. So you went through it a bit fast. So what kind of material do you use? How do you manage to obtain such a stability and strength? Okay, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the durability is the, the the key point, you know, for superphobic surface, right? So we have, uh, we made different material, you know, for, for one case here, we just made, uh, made a surface on the silicon. The, basically the silicon will string, uh, the uh, string make the surface stronger. But another part is within uh, uh, the cavity, we also have the cavity. Within the cavity, we also have nanoparticle. So basically the nanoparticle is re responsible for water repellents. So the silicon is responsible for the me mechanical strength. And this is the one uh, uh, design. Uh, this design is uh, beautiful, but not very easy for large scale manufacturing. So recently we designed the material, you know, with the three, uh, uh, three coating. So we have a three layer. The structure is very similar to our thing. So the top layer, is for water repellents. The bottom layer is for adhesion. And also we have the transition layer between the top layer and the bottom layer. So uh, the material is polymer, is uh, very, very uh, uh, commercialized. But we, ha we have some, uh, 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 some particle have different uh, function, yeah. Thank you so much for that, it's, uh, it's clear. So it's the combination of micro and nanostructures together with the right choice of materials that give the strength. Um, so looking at a question from the audience, please let me know if I've, I've missed anyone so far. Elsa, I have a, another question as you're here. Um, so you were showing basically that you can extract energy from these droplets impacting and moving. So yeah. what is the fundamental uh, and limitation. So how much energy is in each droplet? Does it depend from the surface, the volume, uh, the interaction, so the interface? Yeah. So the, the, fundamentally, the energy is from the kinetic energy of the water droplet, right? So, but here we use the effect that we call the triple electric effect. So when the droplet contact the surface, there's a friction. So the fr when the contact and the separate, we have a charge transfer. So but the previous design is this kind of charge amount is very limited. So by using our new design, we can increase the surface charge uh, uh, amount. So uh, we, this is the reason why we can enhance the energy conversion efficiency. But the problem is even we can enhance the energy conversion efficiency, but the power distance is still, still low. So for this nature work, the energy conversion efficiency is about three, three percent. Okay, <laughs> okay, very very low, but much better than before. Okay, uh, so even now we we uh, we can use the one droplet to light up twenty watts the light bulb, uh, light bulb, but that is uh, not continuous. That's not a DC. <laughs> the problem is how to get a continuous the energy generation. So the, 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 that is a challenge. Yeah. So 3% do you refer to 3% of the kinetic energy or 3% of the surface charge? 3% uh, of the, the kinetic energy, kinetic energy. But right. the, 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 the value is low because you know, we, in, uh, in our output, the water still 
uh, move, right? We didn't consider the kinetic, kinetic energy. If we only consider the, the, uh, the surface charge, okay, that's when the energy conversion is efficient very high. Yeah. Okay, very good. And then I have actually also one question about your heat transfer. And um, you show that your harm or shield is able to basically be cooled down, so wet by a droplet and cooled down much more efficiently than a non-porous surface. Yeah. However, how much of this cooling also happened on the surface below? Because you put the armor on the surface, right? So how is the difference between the two? Okay, so uh, 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 let me find uh, this. So we use, okay, so uh, for, for, for example here, uh, uh, okay, we here, we continuously provide uh, thermal energy to our substrate, okay? So basically we maintain a hard surface, okay? And then we reach the water. We use the latent heat to, to absorb the, 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 the heat. And uh, we, we, uh, here I didn't show the number, uh, big, but, uh, but still the heat flux is not that high because the temperature difference is very large. So the temperature difference is about 1000 degrees. So this technique we can adapt to the flow boiling or the pool boiling. Recently, we, we, we did the pool boiling uh, environment. So, so we can quickly, uh, uh, we, can, we can achieve very high uh, heat flux. Okay, so much better than the uh, current technology. I understand that. Thank you so much for that. Um, so I think that were mostly my questions. Um, so uh, are you actually working on uh, commercializing this now, this uh, cooling technology, or how, how does it look the way forward? Uh, this one, I think the uh, uh, not ready yet because we just uh, finished this work. But for application, right? Uh, I think they're a long way to go. You know, currently for engine or airplane, they use the gas cooling, right? So they, they don't use the liquid cooling. The, why they don't use? Because for liquid cooling, we always suffer from latent frost, okay? They always suffer from latent frost. So, but for gas, they have no this kind of problem, okay? So, but now we solve this problem. I think now we have, we open the new avenue for aerospace to modify the design. Okay, I think this is the one potential application. But another application, which is the very closer, I think is for, uh, for example, uh, the uh, uh, daily application. You know, for example, as a, uh, we did experiment, we use our surface to, to heat, to boil the water, right? We can save energy. So that way the more efficient. I think that way is a, li a little bit uh, closer for application, yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, really, really impressive and um, really um, outstanding work since I saw your last presentation a few years ago. So thank you so much for that. I think it was inspiring. And um, I think if there are no other questions, I would say we uh, perhaps close the uh, presentation here, unless there is any other remark or questions from the audience. Well, then, um, let me, on behalf of everyone, thank you again for being with us today for the Sydney Army Institute Distinguished Lecture Series. It's been really a pleasure having you with us and living, um, learning about your new discovery and success. Thank you so much, Sankai. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Keep it safe. Yeah. Very thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.